Instagram. Boom. Bop. We're live. Kyle. Bada bop, boom. And Ben. Thanks for being here. It's great to see you guys. My pleasure. It's so good to have you. Ben, how you feeling? You know, fantastic. You know, fantastic. Our squad, what's up? This is the first installment of a series on identity and calling and work and all that type of stuff. So, got two of my good friends here today uh, to help us get into week one of this and to kick things off. Oh, well, quickly, you want to do like a 10-second introduction? 10-second oh, introduction, uh, go. Uh, Kyle, leader, 10th grade, uh, general vibe guy. <laughs> and? Oh, uh, uh, Ben, uh, Topsail High School, senior, intern at Renovation Church, play football. Ooh, amazing. That really, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I'm your, I'm Jordan. I don't want to say I'm your host. That's, you are, though. It's a high, it's high praise there. I'm Jordan. Student Director, Renovation Church, and it's good to see you tonight. All right, first question. When you were young, was there anything that you wanted to be when you grew up? Yes. Take it yeah. away. What was it? I wanted to be a paleontologist. A paleontologist? And it was like, it was like a weird obsession. I loved dinosaurs. I was the dinosaur man. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was, like, so, <laughs> what was your favorite dinosaur? Definitely, like, it was actually a brachiosaurus. Ooh. The Ooh. big ones, you know? Okay. So... Basically, what a paleontologist does is they dig up the dinosaur bones, mm. if you didn't know. so What was it that inspired you to want to do this? The dinosaur documentaries on TV. <laughs> I don't mm. know. Okay. The I just, like, I just kept getting, yeah, I kept getting more like dinosaur toys, and my mom just kept putting on stuff, and I was like, I'm the dinosaur man. I'm That's the dinosaur man. Dan- dinosaur, dinosaur train. Man. Yeah. You know? I, I love it. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. Kyle, what about you? <laughs> I wanted to be a tent maker. Uh, growing up, I loved building forts. And I remember reading in scripture how, I think it was like Abraham was a tent maker. I was like, mm. man, that job just sounds dope. Like, <laughs> I want to build tents. <laughs> so then I realized it was like sewing. And uh, it wasn't like legit. Not building. quite your vibe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tent maker, kind of a loose term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mine was basketball player, NBA, NBA All Star, mm. probably. What team? Chicago Bulls, definitely. Not, born in '93, oh. this is like Michael Jordan peak. Michael Jordan. My dad says that I'm not named after Michael Jordan, but there's a lot of people in my family that would disagree with that. So, I uh, disagree yeah, with it. I, <laughs> See, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just like basketball was on all the time. I had all the cards, all the players. I knew all the stats. I, there's like so many pictures of me when I was young of being in a Michael Jordan Bulls jersey. I mean, just like all the home videos are me shooting hoops and on like the tiny goal in the house. So it was NBA All-Star. That's what That's I wanted to be. It. NBA All-Star. That's it. Yeah. All right. So let's just go ahead and, and cut right to the chase here. We're talking about work today. Mm. Big topic. Uh, we have some people watching this. You have a job. Some people, some of you don't have a job. Some of you got your first job. Some of you got your 10th job. Some of you are like, I never want to have a job. And Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's okay. And we're not really specifically just talking about jobs. We're talking more about work and work, not just in the sense of like your future career, what you're going to do for the rest of your life until you're retired, but I mean, it is that, but it's also just other things. The way we carry ourselves, the way we serve, the way we do a lot of things in life. But speaking specifically about work and careers, uh, I wrote something down. I saw this. Work is important because we will spend roughly 90,000 hours of our life. And that will sometimes just feel like it's one working. day. Se- seriously. Some of you maybe almost have this much time on Minecraft. Dang. Guilty. Mm. Boom. That would actually be interesting to see. No, 90,000 hours, that's a long time. You got that thing like the 10,000 hour rule when you're like a, a master or expert at something. 90,000 hours? That's insane. You got a lot of time to be an expert in something. Ooh, that's a really good idea. That's a really good thought. But before we get into work, I want to talk about some assumptions that we all have about work because reality is, you know, TV, jokes, parents, there's like all these things that uh, culture kind of throws at us about the idea of work. So um, when you think of work, What's like some of the first things that come to mind? What are some assumptions that you have made about work or that you think teenagers or people in general make about work? Uh, I think, I think one is working hard, gets you far. I think we hear that a lot. 
And for the most part, yeah, it it does. And I think like a bad one that I can think of is um like having everything in your life be about work, like mm. wrapping your identity in it and um yeah. just letting it define you instead of letting um God define you. That's that's pretty Jeez. real. Yeah. Well, Kyle. Accurate. Uh for me, I gotta say like man students make about work assumptions that you've got to hate it <laughs> okay <laughs> like, yeah honestly yeah. like it's never i've had people to drag like, yeah it's it's the one thing it's okay to complain about all mm. the time yeah right and you know that money is the only thing you got to work for right money is the key to happiness mm. life and everything beyond totally I agree. I think there is a lot of stuff about identity. I think I think uh, Gen Z is very success oriented, yeah. driven. Mm-hmm. A lot of that has to do with education, but I think also a big piece of that is a career that <laughs> gets you some skrill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there's also a lot about you know following your dreams, uh, that type of thing, power, status, money, fame. Uh, but I think the defining of the identity is a, is a really big one that we'll probably get into a little bit more. But also I think, man, growing up, it wasn't necessarily like my parents or anything that showed me this, but I feel like there was just that like cultural thing in the air of like work is horrible and you just got to grind it out. And you know, there's people that work the same job for like 50 years and complain about it every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't have to do this. <laughs> you know, like yeah. if you don't want to. I mean, sometimes, yeah, we like you're not always gonna maybe have the best job in the world. I've worked some jobs that were not the best job in the world. There's some funny stories on that. We, we don't have time for it today, but mm-hmm. I get it. Sometimes you just gotta do something that you don't wanna do and you gotta stick with it and just to get a little bit of money in your pocket or to maybe climb the you know, get this job and then you work hard at that and then you can get to the next thing. Totally. Yeah. But it's like, dude, 50 years at the same place and you hate it every second of it. You know, it's like, man, that's not really the kind of life that I want to live. And I think yeah. God probably has more in mind for us when it comes to work than you have to do something all day, every day for 90,000 hours that you hate. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really sound like a great life to me. It's I don't a lot know about of you. Hours to hate something. It's a lot of hours to hate yeah. something. <laughs> Absolutely. So I do think there is this pressure, though, that students and, and all people face, right, of being successful making money, following your dreams. You're also watching all these other people commit to schools and universities or have jobs or, yeah, I don't know. There's just so much of it. So what are some things that you guys have maybe personally experienced that you feel like shape your beliefs about work and why we should work and the ways that we should work? Specifically for you, what has shaped your beliefs and views on work? Yeah, um, I think specifically for me, um, it comes down to two things and it's family and football. Mm. So um, first off, like my family, I was fortunate to have some pretty good examples in my life. And um, that comes in my mom and my dad and um, even my big brother who showed me um, just, they didn't have to tell me to work hard. It's just how they showed me and set the example that mm-hmm. they, they worked hard all the time. They, um, they strive to do good, but also strive to give their best and also, um, strive to, um, glorify God in it. Uh, and, um, also football, football is a big one because I mean, sports, um, got it. You're with your coaches and teammates sometimes like more than you are with your family. And that's something I went through this past summer is I was literally with that group of guys in football and still am more than I am with my own family. Yeah. And, um, so with that, a lot of things rubbed up, like rubbed off on me, and that would be my best, best effort. Mm-hmm. And um, and anything I do in working, and in um in playing is um to give my absolute best and yeah. work as hard as I can in it. Right, that's great. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing when sports or something else in life teaches you a really great value about you know work or whatever it is. Kyle, yeah. uh, I know for me, it's like you said, family. Like my parents, you know, we we didn't grow up, you know rich so yeah. I, I saw their hard work and you know how they pushed to through mm. the tough times and that was so I think that really developed my um my idea of work and how I should work right, right. and then also just starting out 
in the work field, you know, graduating college and stuff, having my own job now, it's, it's a lot, you know, I, I realize the importance of being happy mm. <laughs> in what you do. Yeah. Like because, enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like you said, we're spending hours, right? Like this becomes your life at some point, right? Mm-hmm. Like you're doing, like, this is your one job. Like this is the thing that you do. Yeah. And so I know that for me, it was just like, okay, I want to do something that I know that I will feel fulfilled yeah. at the end of the day that I accomplished some stuff. Mm, mm-hmm. Like that was so vital to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. There's nothing like working a day, a full day or a week or something and like really getting after it. And then also having that satisfaction when you leave, like exactly. this helped people, Yep, you yeah. know, and <laughs> like this made the world a better place, you know, yeah. instead of like, I don't know, just, I just picture like the old crotchety guy, you know, it's just like <laughs> he hates everyone when he's going home and you know, it's just like, ugh. it's like, no, it's not what we want. Okay. We're going to get into some scripture. Uh, believe it or not, work is all over the Bible. Ben, you're going to be my scripture guy for today. Would you read our first scripture from the book of Genesis? Gotcha. This is uh, Genesis 1, 1, 2 and Genesis 1, 31. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God looked all over all he had made and saw that it was good. And evening passed and the morning came, marking the sixth of the day. Okay, so this is a brief little snapshot of the creation story. The first chapter in the Bible, actually interestingly enough, the first story in the Bible is about God working. It's kind of cool. I love it. The first story in the entire Bible is there's nothing, and then God works, and then there's something, not just something, but the entire universe and everything we've ever known was created in this little gap right here that Ben just read. So day and night, ocean, sky, lands. I wrote plats in the notes. It's plants, actually. Oh, lands, plants. Pla- plants and trees. Don't forget to water your plats. <laughs> <laughs> Moon, sun, stars, birds, fish, man and animals, all the things. So the first story in the Bible is about God working. He designs everything that exists. He makes humans, right, included in all of that. And then what's really special is that he invites humans to participate in the work that he's doing. That's like the first chapter of the Bible. God works and then invites humans to work. That's pretty dope. I love it. I think it's really dope. And uh, really the invitation is like ruling and reigning over creation. And so we'll kind of define work today and for the series as like anything and anything, anything (laughs) that cultivates or watches over God's creation and allows it to flourish. Right. So that's that kind of that idea of like, man, I'm doing this job and there's purpose in it. Yeah. There's like fulfillment in it. I'm, I'm serving people. I'm helping people. I'm making the world a better place. We don't have time to get on this tangent, but like there's a lot of jobs out there that don't make the world a better place. hundred percent. Yeah. And there are definitely some jobs that do make the world a better place. That's just, that's just facts. So we're going to talk throughout this series and the rest of today in what it looks like to join God in his good work that he's doing, which leads to flourishing in our society. And so God's created, designed, fashioned, and formed the universe as we know it. And then, right, it says uh, right here, he saw that it, it was very good. Mm. Ben, would you get into our next scripture? And then we're going to get into some some really exciting stuff. Sounds fantastic. Uh, Genesis 126 or 28 says, then God said, let us make human beings in our in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image In the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Love it. You have a great Bible reading voice. Mm. Thank you. Yes. So the scripture says that we have been made in God's image, which means we now have responsibility to rule and reign over creation, right? So we've probably heard this a lot if you've been in church at our squad. I mean, again, this is the first chapter of the Bible. So if you've ever read the first chapter of the Bible, you've read about this work and this creation and this idea of being made in the image of God. Plat, plants and plats are not made in the image of God. Animals... Y'all, I know we love animals, okay? They're not made in the image of God. 
But what about all dogs go to heaven? We, <laughs> I, we said, I, God said what he said. I shouldn't say I said what I said. So <laughs> our identity at the core of who we are is that we are made in the image of God. What in the world does that mean? In your own words, what does that mean? In my own words, yeah. what does that mean? Well, like I think some students are going to be like, okay, cool. I'm made in the image of God. What does that mean? Like, what? Well, I think being an image bearer of God means that we um, we embody Christ in what we do. And um, being made in the image of God, it's meaning like when we go out to the world and when we're in the world, um, there are eyes on us. There are. I mean, and when we stand for Christ, that means that when people look at us, they're like, oh, that's a Christian. Mm -hmm. So... Being an image bearer of God means that we embody in what we do, we stand for Christ. Yeah. So when you're out and about, just remember that. When people look at you, they're like, oh, this guy stands for Christ. So what you do does matter because you are carrying his image in mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Anything to add? Uh, I think for me, it's just knowing that as image bearers, you know, he's given us the perfect example himself. Right. It shows through scripture what he did and how he was a leader. And so we can apply that and, you know, show that within ourselves and within our own work ethic and yeah. in our environments. And I just think that's, that's beautiful that he's like, Hey, not only are you an image bearer, but I've given you all of the abilities and all the right. like, examples to fulfill that. Yeah. No, it's so cool. So I think about it as like, again, God works at the beginning of Genesis. Then he invites us to work. So it's like, I'm in his image, meaning like I'm going to do the things that he does, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Uh, it's like the things that I love to do. It's like God loves those things. Mm -hmm. The things that I find beautiful, like God finds those things beautiful, you know, which is really cool. So we were establishing a little bit of this identity piece, which is that, you know, we're not necessarily what we do. We don't need to wrap our entire identity into our job, right? But our jobs and things we do are still significant. So what does this established identity, okay, I'm an image bearer of God before I'm anything else. How does that like impact the way that we work and maybe like help us under see work in like a new way? Yeah, uh, I think it allows us to... Um to work for something greater than ourselves. So mm -hmm. when we're working that we work to glorify God, I think it's um, Colossians 3.23 talks about um, work for man as if you were to work for God. Right, right. This is so, not even in the notes, by the way. So I got, <laughs> we got some Bible knowledge over here. So yeah. with that being said, um, to let no matter what we're doing, no matter what work or job that we're working, that we are able to see it as an opportunity to build the kingdom, but also an opportunity to love the people around us that we may be working with. Right. That's great. Yeah. I, just to kind of add on to what he's saying, you know, having our identity, if our, if our identity is in Christ, you know, we are able to show that compassion and that forgiveness toward others. Right. Yeah. Cause let's just be honest. Work is going to be brutal sometimes it's hard. and unforgiving. Mm -hmm. Right. But we are called to be forgiving. <laughs> Right. And there's that there's that clash there with society and our yeah. purpose in this life. And I just right. think it's I think it's so beautiful to be able to just have the ability to even do that. Right. Right. Because we right. are made in the image of Christ. Yeah. And it's R so surreal. Yeah. yeah. When you do just sit and think for a second, like God makes all of these amazing things and then he's like, Hey, Ben, I want you to help. And you know, and, and Jordan, I want you to help. And I'm like what, what, what am I like, yeah. what am I going to do here? You know, it is very humbling, but also so crazy to think about that. Like God wants, he wants me to be a partner with him yeah. in making the world Little a more me. beautiful, flourishing place, right. which is crazy. And so I think we definitely have opportunity as we discussed to bring like the character of God, the nature of God to life for other people to see through the way that we work. What's so crazy to me is that all of what we've discussed here is before the fall of man. Before Adam and Eve messed it up and talked to that little slithery serpent and ate that fruit, this is before sin is in society. So I think a lot of times there's this thing from culture that's like, work is bad, it's terrible, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a grind, it's a drag, it's, it's just like, we always, I, think, I don't know, a lot of times we talk bad about it, and this is not a punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Working's not a punishment. Maybe that was for you. 
you, 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 maybe today. Um, it was actually a gift, not a curse, which is really, really, really cool to think about because God has intended us to collaborate with him. So of course, sin has affected work as it's affected everything. Uh, I mean, the scripture says that like, you know, the ground is going to be cursed and like work's going to be harder now, but work existed before the, the, the curse uh, and before sin uh, came into society. So uh, how does that change the way that you see it? Like work isn't a punishment. It's a gift. It's not a curse. Do you think that should impact the way leaders and students think about what they're choosing to do with their future careers and dreams and aspirations? I, I a hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. That it does change the way that I view my work and my career because when you have the mindset of, Hey, this is actually a joy to be doing this mm. and it gives you a whole new purpose mm -hmm. through that. Right. And so mm -hmm. you're not going into it thinking, Oh, I just get to complain about this all the time. Yeah. And that's your main purpose is to just <laughs> whine about it. Yeah. It, it's when you have that change of mindset of, okay, I'm going to be able to see amazing things come from this work, mm -hmm. man, it gets you so pumped to right. go out every day and to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, totally. I, just, I think it's just a wonderful thing to, I don't know. It, it's yeah. really changed my way of thinking. Right. Well, here. I think it's really inspiring when I see someone who just genuinely loves their job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. cause like, you can see some people, you know, if you've ever, I don't know, like I'm not, so you, you've interacted with some people at, at who were working, who yeah. it was like, are, are you okay, man? You know, yeah. it's like, do you want to be <laughs> like, you're looking real angry today. You know, it's just been a bad day. We all have bad days. But yeah. when you see someone who just loves their job, has an excitement and joy for life, even if they're not making the most money. I mean, you could see a lot of people driving nice cars, making a lot of money who hate their jobs yeah, and who are miserable all the time. And you can see people who aren't making that much money, uh, but have these life giving, fulfilling jobs. And they're like the best people ever to be around. It's really cool. I think that just goes into play with like, what is your reasoning behind that job? Is it mm. just, is it just because you're worshiping the money aspect of it? Mm. Because then your work ethic's not going to be there. Right. right. And when you have totally. the mindset of I am the image of Christ in this scenario and I can be able to provide, um, joy, forgiveness for all these other people, mm -hmm. it changes your mindset and the way that you work because you yourself become joyful in that moment. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I completely agree. I love that you keep bringing up complaining because I feel like that's a big thing in like yeah. our society right yeah. now is that everybody wants to complain like about anything, any little thing. And I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of it either. <laughs> if you were just watching, like if, if you were in this room beforehand, I was just complaining about a football game. So like, I mean, it's like, but um, I do love that you keep bringing up complaining because that's like that, that challenge of, oh, we have to change our mindsets to be like, man. I shouldn't complain about this. Mm. I should see it as an opportunity to um, to be an image bearer of Christ and also to use work as an act of worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a pretty cool idea. What we do with our time actually matters to God. Mm -hmm. So what you do with 90,000 hours of your life, you think about it that way. Think, think about how much you can accomplish in like a year. Then think about 90,000 hours. I don't know how many years that is. It's a lot of years. Yeah. And, um, okay, so here, here let's, let's wrap this thing up because I don't want to, I mean, this is amazing, but I don't want to talk for an hour. I love you guys, but I don't want to talk to you for an hour. <laughs> I get um, it. Yeah. Here's why I think this matters so much. And this is maybe going to get a little, little more real. We'll, we'll go a, a step, you know, um, lower here. Uh, I just think we have a big problem today with teenagers, not, not even just teenagers all people, but yeah. this is for teenagers, right? So let's talk teenagers with teenagers, just not being certain of their purpose, mm -hmm. yeah, their identity. Like, why am I here? There's all these other people out here. Why, why am I here? What am I supposed to do? What's my identity? There's a lot of questions around core aspects of our humanity, right? And our situations and our reality. Um, like, what am I supposed to be doing with my life and my time and my energy. So really what we're talking about are some of the most basic, but hardest to answer questions about existence and what it means to be a human is like, what am I here for? Who am I? Why am I alive? Right. Yeah. 
And I do think we are in a, some type of epidemic here of a lot of people living their lives trying to figure out the answer to these questions, but maybe not looking in the right places. And so we've talked about these things before at our squad, these like big questions. But I think this series and even what we discussed today really opens the door for that type of conversation and reflection because what we've talked about has essentially said, well, why am I alive? It's to uh, love God and to serve him by reflecting his goodness, right? Let's just call it his image in everything I do, my thoughts, attitudes, and actions. That's your work. Yep. That's, that's teaching and, and worshiping with your life, as you were saying. And so then you're like, okay, well, why did God even create humans in the first place? Well, God created humans to worship him by bearing his image for the world. That's like the absolute core fundamental things of being a human person. Yep. And if people don't know God, and the purpose that he's given them and the identity that he's placed on them, they're in for some pretty um, hard things when they start Same. growing up and getting older and really asking some of those like deep questions. So I want to pass it over to you guys one more time here. A lot of people are going to watch this. Mm -hmm. A lot of teenagers are going to watch this. And maybe some of them have some big questions about what we've discussed. What would you say to the teenager right now who's watching this, um, who's just, confused and lost and feeling like they don't have a purpose? It's a big question. I know. But if you could speak through the camera to that person, uh, what would you say? Yeah. Um, I think that I'm going to tell you exactly what a bunch of mentors and people in my life have poured mm -hmm. into me is that you have specific gift, talents, and treasures, um, that God has given you. And it shows that in his word multiple times. Um, you have these talents and gifts that transfer over to what you do in life. So um, if you're working a job that you're completely just miserable in, maybe find something where you can be passionate about it because mm. God has given you specific gifts to be in situations like that where you can glorify him with what you do. Yeah. So um, I think, again, that you have specific gifts, talents, and treasures that no one else has. Right that you can bring to, um, to the table that you can use to be an image bearer of God and that you can, um, you can use to just glorify him and everything you do. Yeah. That's so great. And even next week, we're going to get into like the nitty gritty of how to figure out my specific talents and calling and what am I good at and how can like, again, you know, Kyle's good at things that I'm not good at mm -hmm. and you're good at things that, I, that Kyle's not good. Right. It's like all every way around. We need all of us here to make this happen and, and to make it work. So that's, that's so great. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to get real serious here. Let's go. All right. <laughs> For those of you who don't feel like you have purpose, um, I want to say that you are not alone, mm, right? Mm -hmm. That feeling of you don't feel like you belong. That isn't you. That is not real because you do belong. You do have a purpose. And there are others that feel that way just like you do, but know that you are not alone because that can be a very isolating feeling, right? Um, it takes time <laughs> to, yeah, to, right. to find, to find your reasons, uh, to find your talents through what you do. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that the more you work, the more fruit comes from it, right? Yeah. The longer you persevere through these tough times, God is going to reveal himself in ways that you did not think were possible. And you were like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was, I didn't know I had that ability, right? And the more you surround yourself with people that are also helping you build those talents and to help, um, like, preserve or not preserve, but what's the word I'm looking for? Um, cultivate yeah, yeah, yeah. your, your purpose and you know, that share that same drive as you do, you guys are going to be able to work with each other to figure that out. And it's such an amazing feeling when you come out of that feeling of just like, man, I'm <laughs> like worthless. I have nothing, mm. no purpose. And then you realize and you look back and like, oh yeah, I can do this. Right. This helped that person. Right. Or you have people that come to you like, hey man, I just want to say that like you were really amazing in that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so life-giving. Right. And so just know you're not alone. Mm. It takes time and you will, you do have a purpose. You Love do. it. Love it. Love it. Love the wisdom yeah. here. Uh, this conversation has been amazing. 
and I would love to continue it, but I want to wrap it up and we're already even like tiptoeing into what we're going to be talking about throughout the rest of the series, which is amazing. So, uh, Ben, would you be willing to pray to close us out, pray for the students who are going to watch this, that they would be able to see themselves as image bearers of God and that they would begin to see their purpose and their identity in who God has created them to be. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, dear father, we just thank you. Thank you for letting us gather in your name. Um, I ask that you, um, put blessing over the students of our squad and the students around the world, um, that anyone who may be watching this um, just knows that they are loved by you. Father, I ask that you allow them to see work as not something that they um, need to dread, but as something they can mm-hmm. use to glorify you and carry your image in. Father, I ask that you allow us and help us to be image bearers of you, that we are able to change our minds to um, focus on um, just allowing us to worship you in all that we do. Uh, Father, I pray over anyone who may be struggling right now with purpose or calling that um, they know that each of them have gift, talents, and treasures that you have given them that um, you will reveal in them as time passes Mm -hmm. and that they are able to see the fruit of all of it. Father, um, we pray over each and every single student in our ministry. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Kyle, Ben, thank you guys so much. Our squad, we love you. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.